House of the Dragon, The Rogue Prince. The Rogue Prince, or, A King's Brother chronicles the evolving relationship between Viserys and his brother Prince Daemon, and the king's plan for succession to his daughter from his first marriage even though he has a son from his second marriage, which cements a rivalry within the Targaryens that plays out in the princess and the queen. Princess Renera dives deep into the prophecies about House Targaryen while confronting a realm that resists the idea of a woman on the Iron Throne, and Prince Daemon, embittered over being passed over as the heir to Westeros, prepares to go to war. Here are my top 10 scenes in this week's installment of House of Dragon entitled, The Rogue Prince. Number 10. The Plan. During the small council, the king and his subjects are discussing what to do in Step Stones. Princess Renera offers a solution. She suggests that the king send his dragon riders to the Step Stones to end the conflict once and for all. You have dragon riders, father. Send us. Her suggestion is quickly dismissed by the king because she is a woman. But Lord Corlys made a statement about her plan that most kings would have taken offense to. At least the princess has a plan. Did Lord Corlys Valerion cross the line when he made the statement, at least the princess has a plan? Number 9. Daemon Targaryen Talks with Miseria. After his altercation with Otto Hightower, Daemon meets Miseria back in their quarters. Miseria is upset to learn that Daemon has been lying about their relationship together. This is why we learn that she has no knowledge of her fake pregnancy and marriage proposal. Obviously, this hurts her because she has developed feelings for Daemon. She's also concerned for her life. Daemon is protected by the king because he is his brother, but she is not protected should the throne decide to behead her because of Daemon's lies. Number 8. Reverse Psychology. The king is holding a very small council to help him make the decision on whether or not to marry his younger cousin, Princess Lena. She is 12. She will mature. Otto Hightower takes this opportunity to use reverse psychology on the king. This undoubtedly to me destroyed any chance of Princess Lena marrying into royalty. The fact that the princess is very young, she is 12, coupled with Otto basically telling the king that he shouldn't marry for duty, but for love instead, has helped King Viserys make up his mind once and for all. Number 7. The Order of Things, Princess Renera Targaryen vs Princess Rhaenys Targaryen. This verbal exchange between the two princesses is legendary. Princess Rhaenys is giving her younger cousin a lesson in the order of things. Because that is the order of things. This is also an attempt to dissuade the younger princess, and heir to the throne, from interfering with her father's decision to marry the much younger woman, Princess Lena. It is quite entertaining the way the two princesses attempt to put each other in their respective place. They denied you. Queen who never was. But they bent the knee to me and called me heir to the throne. Do you remind your father's men of that as you carry their cups? So who do you think came out on top in this discussion? Number 6. Unlikely allies. It's not surprising that Corlys Valerian allies with Daemon Targaryen. During the meeting of the small council, I always felt like Corlys was in favor of Daemon's actions. This appears to be Corley's best course of action if he is going to have a path to the Iron Throne. The King's decision to marry Alicent cuts off this path for Corley's, which means he has to forge a new one. According to the book, it worked. Damon does marry Corley's daughter Princess Lena, and they eventually have two children. Number 5. Poor timing. King Viserys did two things wrong here. The first one was he could have told his daughter about his plans to marry Alicent the night before. This would have given him time to explain to her why he was making this decision. Subsequently, it would have given her an opportunity to voice her opinion and they could have come to some sort of understanding. Number 2. He should have waited to reveal this news to everyone after he's dealt with the situation in Dragons Keep involving his brother Damon, and the uprising that is currently taking place in the Step Stones. This would have assured the alliance with Corlys Valerion until the matter was resolved. Number 4. The Step Stones. In the opening scene, we finally get a closer look at the Step Stones, ruled by Kragas Drahar, also known as the Crab Feeder, a Myrish Prince Admiral of the Triarchy. Here we get our first detailed look at the Step Stones, which is quite jarring. 
We no longer have to use our imaginations as to what it would look like to see crabs feed on human flesh. I have a feeling that the battle here will be one of the great wars in the House of Dragon. What do you think? Number 3. Otto Hightower, the Hand of the King, urges his daughter Alicent to sleep with the king tonight. He is well aware that King Viserys is considering marrying the young Princess Lena and needs to secure his place in the realm. As most fathers today wouldn't think of doing such a horrific thing, this appears to be common practice in the Westeros universe. Would you offer your daughter to the king if you were in Otto's shoes? Number 2. Princess Rhaenys and Lord Corlys offer their daughter, Princess Lena Valerion, to the king in marriage. Even though this is customary in Westeros for older men to marry very young women, this makes the king extremely uneasy. Take a listen. What's to miss like? She is 12. The fact that King Viserys is reluctant to marry someone who is 12 years old illustrates to me that he is a noble and just king. I also believe that he has begun to develop feelings for Alicent. Would you offer your 12-year-old daughter to the king to secure a line to the throne? Number 1. Otto vs. Daemon. King Viserys was headed to Dragonstone to deal with his brother Daemon. But Otto, the hand of the king, volunteers to go to Dragonstone and deal with Daemon himself. The two men met on the Great Wall with their soldiers in tow. This is a very intense scene. Also, it was about to escalate into an all-out battle until Daemon produces the Caraxes, the dragon he stole. Otto reluctantly stands down. All of you! Seed the fucking steel! As he knew he and his soldiers did not stand a chance against Daemon's forces and a full-grown dragon. So what did you think of House of Dragons so far? Let us know in the comments section below if you loved it or hated it. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel for more Game of Thrones content like this. Thanks for hanging out with us, and we'll see you next time.